Hey fam, happy new year and welcome to the very first video of 2024. It's been a minute since I've posted, since you've seen anything from me and I wanted to give a little personal uh, vlog style update on what's been going on in my life. Uh, Bo, my boyfriend and I, a recent cancer diagnosis with Dookie. What kind of content you can expect from me this year and some overall goals of mine. I have some saucy, spicy, interesting things to talk about, so stay tuned. Here we go. Okay, so first up, let me apologize for being MIA for the last, you know, two months or so. Frankly, I did have some burnout for various reasons. I've been overwhelmed, uh, both with work, financially, then the holidays came, and that's a whole whirlwind. I'm sure you guys know how that goes. Regarding weekly news updates, I haven't done that in quite some time. I will be getting back into that. Those aren't going anywhere, so be on the lookout for that um, shooting for this week. The interviews, I believe I'm sitting on like four or five completely recorded interviews. They just need to be edited and then put up. Uh, I know some of you like to watch them or listen to them while you're doing your cardio, so that's coming soon as well. I also really want to get back into what I originally did when I started this channel and what um, a lot of you have come to love, which is my vlog style content. And that's just me doing what I'm doing in like in this video, talking to camera, talking about myself, my personal life, um, my thoughts, my feelings, my fitness journey could be part of it, my HIV journey, and not necessarily just sitting here, but sometimes like I'll do a walk and talk with the camera, different locations and stuff like that. So I do want to get more into vlogging. Honestly, the biggest hurdle for me has just been the time constraints and the lack of energy just because I have so much going on. All right, I just posted that I recently hit 4 million views on my YouTube channel. That's awesome because in 2023, I had posted that I had hit 3 million. So over the course of 2023 alone, that one year, I had 1.3 million views. So that means that the amount of views that I'm getting, the rate at which I'm getting views is definitely increasing and that's always a great sign if you, you you know you're trying to get your youtube channel to grow and also the subscribers have been growing as well so i'm really really heartened by that thank you to all of you who have supported me shared my content um faithfully watched for so long and also my subscriber count in 2023 from the beginning at just over 23,000 by december 31st i was just over 36,000. so that's you know that's a what a more than 50% increase in my subscriber count. That's huge. I'm so excited about that. And where things are headed in the right direction. So I wanted to talk about, I don't think I've mentioned this before on any of my platforms, but in 2023, I had been struggling financially in large part, mostly because I had a huge hit to my income. Pretty early on in the year, I had one of my um, annual contracts because I do a lot of like partnerships and some of them are like on an ongoing annual basis. One of them decided not to renew. Okay. And then another one, they wanted my, they wanted me to shift my content, the focus of my content in a really negative direction. That is just not, I mean, if you know anything about me and the con kind of content that I produce, negative focused content is definitely like the opposite of what I focus on. So I knew that was going to be, that That was like, that was really hard, honestly, to walk away from. But it was, it was the, it was the choice between having this source of income that I needed and wanted or sticking with my brand. And for me, I'm always trying to think about the long term investing in myself and my brand and in you guys and also like maintaining a certain level of trust and integrity and responsibility in my content because you know the day that I just start doing things for a paycheck is the day that I'm no longer doing the content I initially set out to do. So it was a pretty hard decision for me but and my agent supported me but I had to let that go. So that was two major sources of income that just over the course it was the same weekend too in the same weekend gone and then i was left with less than half of my income from the previous year 
So, I mean, if you can imagine your income, more than half of it going away in the course of a weekend, um, that was very challenging for me. Um, so I've, you know, I've been trying to spend the, the better part of the year trying to, you know, get my financial house in order and stuff like that. Not an easy feat. And it was also the main trigger for why I and Bo decided that we should move. We both felt it was in the interest of each other that we look for a place that's cheaper and but still nice. Um, we're still living in downtown LA. So we found a spot in downtown LA quite a bit cheaper in a smaller apartment community. And so back in November, we made we made the final decision to move. So we moved out of our recent place that I showed you in the video. I haven't done a tour of this place or shown you much of it, but I'm so happy that we did. It was it absolutely helped financially. And then on top of that, um, we gained like 200 square feet of space. And then I think more importantly, the the people that live here and the management, like they are like, it's night and day between where we were living before and where we are now. They're so communicative and they're so nice and they're so warm and kind and welcoming. And the tenants are great too. I was shocked on the day that we moved in because every time we got in the elevator, because you need your little key to like choose the floor. Um, every time we got in the elevator, the, a resident would, would be like, oh, what floor are you on? And they would like get it for us. And I was like, wow, like at my old place, I can't imagine people going out of their way to A, talk to you and B, um, do something like thoughtful that wasn't just like completely selfish um, because that was just the vibe at the old place. It was a really nice place, but everyone was just so into themselves. And so it's nice to just, be in a place that feels a little more down to earth. And that was the other thing. Yes, I had that huge hit to my pay and that was a reason to move, but the other kind of like background motivation for wanting to, to kind of rein in our finances a bit is because Bo and I both feel like we have the feeling that our country, the US, is headed for some challenging times, whether that's a recession, a depression, whatever, um, it seems there's like there's a lot of cracks in the foundation of our economy. And although all the headlines say everything is great, unemployment's at an all time low, blah, 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 like actually hearing real people and how they're doing day by day to day and, and struggling with inflation and and housing and rent and all these things, it just doesn't add up. So I think it's better to just play it safe and just be really cautious with our spend. So. Super happy here. I'll, I should do a little uh, walkthrough of the apartment or something in one of my upcoming vlogs since that's what I'm going to be doing more of this year. Okay, so my big goal for 2024 is to go full time in content creation. Right now, I do have a survival job. I'm working with my parents at their manufacturing company. They scooped me up during the pandemic when the restaurant that I was bartending at went under. Um, but now it's time for me to kind of move forward with my career and things are kind of building. Um, I mean, I say that after I told you that I lost more than half my income. But <laughs> when I say things are building, I mean like the connections, the opportunities, like I said, the view count and the subscriber growth and all these things. So things are happening. It may, it may not be like manifesting in the form of a check, in the form of money in my bank account yet, but I can feel it and there's some opportunities possibly coming up, knock on wood. I don't want to jinx anything that I'm hopeful about for this year. So my goal is by July, 2024, that I'm able to segue out of my parents' business and commit full-time to content creation. And that is great for several reasons. For First of all, it will help me free up so much time. I mean, it's a 40 hour a week job that I do with my parents to have that back and to be able to focus that time and energy on content creation is massive because right now it's just a matter of, okay, I work Monday through Friday, eight hour days, normal kind of work schedule. And then I have the weekends and nights to kind of figure out everything else. And I've been working on my fitness journey, as you know, and that's like two hours committed to the gym. And so if you throw that in every night, two hours, two hours, two hours, and then just regular errands and just like, normal shit that you have to get done. I mean, you all know this. Um, and then try to also film, edit, record, research, and do all that stuff 
it doesn't leave like any time for being um, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy. I'm in a relationship, you know, giving time and energy to that, that can cause some strain just that I'm always like either at work or I'm sitting in this office, I'm on my computer, whatnot. So it'll be really nice to kind of uh, to at least attempt to, to carve out some boundaries as far as like when I'm going to work and when I'm going to dedicate time to, you know, myself and spending time with Bo and Dookie and all that. Here's to that big goal in 2024. My weight loss journey is still a journey. I'm still mid stride here, but I can definitely see that there has been an improvement in 2023. For those of you who have been watching my content, especially on Instagram, I've been posting pictures of the Zozo Fit. That is this like, it almost looks like a onesie leotard. Is it two pieces? It's a shirt and pants. It's skin tight and it's got all these like dots on it, a dot matrix of sorts. And then I stand in front of the camera and then I rotate and the, my iPhone camera will take pictures at each rotation and it puts it all together and it creates this 3D image of my body. And so I've been doing like comparisons of, you know, every few months or so of the 3D image. And you can, you can definitely see that my body is changing in the right way. But when I step on the scale, um, I'm still in the 190s. It's been that way for a year and that's, it's crazy. I mean, I know this on an intellectual level. I get what's going on because I'm losing fat, but it's also being replaced by, by muscle and muscle is more dense. So you don't need as much muscle to weigh the same as a volume of fat. So I, I'm, I'm getting smaller in certain areas and my muscles are getting bigger, but my weight's staying the same. It's hard to wrap my, my mind around that, even though I understand it. Um, but that's why I always say, you know, you can't, if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to lean up or you're trying to put on muscle, you can't just look at the scale and say, look, I'm, you know, I'm cutting right now. So, but the scale's not moving and then allow yourself to get discouraged by the fact that the, the, the number on the scale isn't going down the way you think it is because just because that's not happening, doesn't mean that there aren't real changes happening in your body. So just like me, like there are things that I can see. And then when I'm doubting myself, I can kind of go, oh, no, no, no. That's like for sure. Like I'm starting to see some vascularity pop up, meaning I'm starting to see the veins in my arms starting to peek through the skin and get more pronounced. And all of a sudden new veins that I hadn't seen since pre-pandemic are starting to pop up again. That only happens when the fat underneath your skin gets thin enough that the, the vein can finally start to push through. So I know I'm losing fat. And then also uh, the obvious stuff like putting a belt on, like I'm able to put it on tighter belt loops and my clothes are fitting and they're, they're a little more like loose in some areas and stuff like that. So it's good progress, but like I've said before, I'm taking it slow. I'm not like putting too much pressure on myself just because I have so many other things going on at the same time. I don't want to overwhelm myself or make myself crash or like what tends to happen is if I go too hard, then I'll, I'll, I'll swing the other way violently and just in like this rebellious streak and just, I would end up just like binge eating and not working out at all because I, it was just too much all at once. <clears throat> so I'm going very slow, gradual increase. I'm gradually increasing the intensity of my workouts and gradually reining in my eating to make, make sure it's more healthy, just very slowly over time so that it's kind of a pleasant experience. But it's definitely my goal to get into competing again. I'm thinking probably sometime in 2025, I'll really start thinking about competing again on a professional level. Same federation that I did last time when I was in Muscle Beach, Venice, California, um, and see where that goes. Hopefully, yeah, I mean, especially if I'm going full time at that point and I can really, I mean, the thing I'm really looking forward to about going full time, this is kind of a tangent, sorry, is that I can do what I want when I want. What do I mean by that? I mean, I don't have to worry about like requesting time off. Am I able to go to this conference that's really important? Well, I need time off. Oh, I don't have pay time off available. So then there's this friction at work and then I have to make sure that someone can cover me and, and all of that. I just want to be able to say, this is my job. This is my career. I am going to this conference. I am going to prepare for this competition. I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. And it's all my decision. I'm in control. Anyway, back to uh, fitness. Okay, so I'm going to compete. Yes, that's great. Everything's on track. I will. I, that reminds me, I got to post a new Zozo Fit update. So I'll do that. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that soon. 
And then I'll, I also want to do a more in-depth vlog style kind of showing you how I do the photo, set it up with the Zozo Fit camera on the tripod, go through that whole thing, maybe show you a little bit of the app. Not because I'm sponsored, they're not paying me a dime, but just because I really like it. And I think it's really, it's kind of simple tech, but it's really cool and helpful. On to the next. About two or three years ago, I was on social media and I saw that a friend of mine had posted that her cat had been diagnosed with cancer. Um, I don't know if they, if the cat had had surgery or what, but at, they were at the point where the cat needed, I don't know if it was radiation therapy or chemotherapy, but it was very expensive. It was like $30,000 and they did not have insurance. They didn't have any way to pay for it. So they were desperately asking people online. They were crowdsourcing, crowdfunding to try to get this treatment for their cat. And it's my friend and her sister. And I know they were c completely devastated by that, completely emotionally traumatized. It was like part of their family, you know? Uh, I don't think that it was successful. And I just remember over weeks seeing them like asking repeatedly and, and, you know, trying to share the story about what was going on. And it really impacted me. And when I was thinking about my little dookie boy, huh, baby? Um, I just thought if that ever happened to me, I would be, I would be devastated. I would be destroyed inside. And so I thought, let me look into health insurance for Duke and see what's out there and how much it costs and, you know, really consider it because God forbid I'm ever in the position where something major like that happens and I can't afford it. And I have to like make a decision based on, you know, money and not like what's, best for Dookie. So I looked and I ended up finding this really, really great insurance policy. The deductible was $250 and that would cover the whole year. And then the insurance would cover 90%, 90%. So I would only be out of pocket for 10%. Amazing. So for example, in this like $30,000 um, treatment, if that were the case with Duke, I would be out of pocket $3,225. That's it's a lot of money still, don't get me wrong, but it's small enough that I can make a level-headed decision based on what's best for Dookie rather than going, well, guess there's nothing I can do. Got to let it go. You know what I mean? And the policy was $140 a month, not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. And there were times, even in the last year where I was like, especially after what happened with my income where I'm like, do I need to keep paying this like what I could put that money in a savings account and save it and then have that for Duke but then I'm like okay but Rafe are you really going to be that disciplined to do that all the time and never touch it and always put that money in there no matter what um and I wasn't I was kind of hesitant about that especially when I'm struggling financially so I'm like if I can just continue to make this payment it's in his best interest and anything could happen at any time but there were, I definitely had the doubts and I definitely had those days where I was like, maybe I should just cancel it. Like, maybe I'm going overboard. Well, guess what? Two weeks ago, I took, Bo and I took Duke to a new vet called Modern Animal and met the new vets. They were super sweet and super kind. Uh, they really spent a lot of time with us, which was really great. And I had noticed in the past I want to say a year probably some bumps on his body now i know dogs get these like fatty masses on their body sometimes and um, they can be benign or it could be something cancerous so i was just taking note of that and i was really honestly in the back of my mind kind of worried about it a lot so i was really wanting to get into this appointment and the first two i was able to find and then they checked it and the doctor was about to leave then i was like i know there's another one but I can't find it right now. I don't, I don't know why. And then like five minutes later, I was petting Duke while um, one of the assistants was helping with something. And then I found it and I was like, oh yeah, it's right here. And so I brought the vet back in and she checked it and she's, she kind of got a little quiet and she said, hmm, this one's like, the other two masses were kind of like soft and malleable and this one's was firm. And I told her that at some point, you know, it had been bugging Duke and he was, like licking, kind of almost like biting at it and it was bleeding and stuff. And then she's like, okay. And then she got really concerned because um, that's often a sign of a mast cell tumor. And so they took a needle to each of those lumps. 
to like check it, put it on a, like a glass slide and look under a microscope. And the first two were fatty. So nothing to really worry about there at this point. And then the third one, they, um, she was like, yeah, that's, I think it's a mast cell tumor. And she said, I think we should send it out to have it, to have confirmatory testing um, to confirm that that's, that's what it is. And I was talking to her and she was explaining things to us and out of nowhere, <laughs> the waterworks just happened. I just it just tears started streaming down my face. I had this like, um, I just had this like, I don't know, like built up anxiety and fear about <laughs> that being the case. I was so worried about it. And then to hear her say that that's what it was, was like, oh, it was like, I was really, I was upset, but then I was also like, so glad that I brought Duke in and I'm like, just praying that, you know, um, it's something that we can treat and take care of. And then it's not going to be something really crazy or advanced or aggressive or whatnot. So she was really sweet. She gave me a hug, several hugs <laughs> since I couldn't stop. <laughs> I wasn't sobbing like I was just talking like this but the tears just kept coming then she said what we should do is set him up for staging which is where they um, you know really go through a little bit more in detail with x-rays and ultrasound to see if there's anything else that is, may look concerning or not normal before he goes in for surgery and we set that surgery date immediately like the first available date locked it in in January so we can get the, on that as soon as possible. Well, he went in for staging last week, had his x-rays, ultrasound, and everything looks good. Kidney, liver, um, his intestines. They didn't notice anything abnormal, except there was one thing that she was kind of concerned about, which was his heart size. It seemed a little enlarged, but she said that might be because of the way he was positioned. He was like in a sling and kind of like stretched out back. So it might've kind of like from this one particular angle made it look enlarged even though it's not. Uh, she was worried that maybe he was on a grain-free diet and I checked and it's grain inclusive. So she's like, okay, now I'm like really, now I'm really reassured and, and not, not worried about it. So the next step is he's gonna go in for surgery um, on Tuesday and they're gonna remove the two fatty masses just to be safe, like might as well do it all in one treatment and then they're also going to remove the tumor and she said they have to remove I think is two centimeters to I think two centimeters around it because those tumors tend to have like little tendrils that you can't see that are growing outward in the skin and so if you don't get enough of a margin around the tumor there could be some left and then you could have regrowth happening there it's in the back of his left leg right by his butt so they're going to take that out and then send it in for biopsy to see how aggressive it is. So it could be grade one, two, or three. One is relatively benign, high survivability rate, um, and then grade three is very aggressive. And that's like a pretty low survivability rate. She seems pretty hopeful that it's going to be grade one or grade two, especially after the x-ray and ultrasound but obviously we won't know until we know. So fingers crossed. I appreciate any good goodwill, good energy for Dookie, not just for that, but also that, you know, he comes out of it and <laughs> he's, he's in his bed looking at me every time I say his name, um, just so that he, you know, isn't totally miserable after. I did buy him one of those donuts so that he doesn't have that rigid cone. I know he's gonna hate it anyway, but it is what it is. I'll update you on, you know, how Duke's surgery goes and then the biopsy and all that. I just remember that day when I got the diagnosis of his tumor thinking, oh my God, like I am so, so glad. I'm so thankful to the universe, to myself for keeping that policy, that insurance policy. Holy shit. Like, I would be so incredibly stressed out already based on how much money it would cost me already just for what we did on that initial visit and then on the x-rays and the ultrasound for him. And then also now that there's going to be the surgery and the biopsy and who knows 
if there's anything else after that, it would be completely soul crushingly overwhelming right now financially if I didn't have that insurance. So I'm very grateful for that. Now I'm done with that traumatizing update. Now for something completely opposite of that. Those of you who have been watching my content for years know that every once in a while I like to do a little something something little procedure or something to spruce up the old mug. <laughs> it's fun to me. I like it. I enjoy it. Um, it's not something to overthink or read into too much. I love myself. YOLO. You only live once. You only you only get to exist once. And if this is something that I enjoy doing, it's it's it makes me feel good, then why not? And I don't really care like if people think that I'm vain or insecure or what have it I don't it, that has no bearing on my life and my experience of life. So I enjoy doing it. I can, so I will. Um, anyway, so last year in 2023, someone reached out to me on Instagram from the hair center of Turkey <laughs> and invited me to come in for a hair transplant. I was like, oh my God, amazing. How nice of them to reach out to me and offer me. Wait, someone, someone was on Instagram and saw me and was like, I can fix that. <laughs> so I'm like, am I? Is this, is this a compliment or <laughs> what's happening? But look, I appreciate the gesture. It's very nice. Um, I know I've, I have a five head. All my life I've had a five head. As a kid, I was made fun of for it. Now it's like, I don't really care that much. It's distinguished, okay? It means I have a big brain. I have a big cranial space in my, in my skull for a big brain. Um, and then some of you who haven't seen my hair back are like, what are you talking about? You don't have a five head. But look, if I have my hair back, you can really see, especially when I get my hair cut short, it's like really obvious. And this isn't like, I don't have a receding hairline. It's always, um, it's always been like that since I was a kid. And it's just genetic. I, it's, it's always been that way. So I've come to accept it. It's not a big deal. Sometimes I have thought about, mm, I wonder what it would look like if my like hairline was lower not here but but lower than it is um that might be like that might look look nice i might be interested in in, in a hair transplant for that one day but it wasn't something it was a pri it wasn't a priority i wasn't really focused on it but then when someone reached out and said hey we want it we would like we would love for you to come we'll invite you and take care of you and get this procedure i was like hell yes sign me up so it is on it's been in motion for like I want to say six to nine months. I got a ticket. That's the only thing I had to pay for was to go out there, fly out there. They're going to pick me up from the airport, house me. Well, I shouldn't say house me. That sounds like they're putting me in some like house. They're not. Um, they're going to take care of my accommodations and then they'll do the surgery and all of that. And they're also going to take me out um, into Istanbul. It's in Turkey and go sightseeing, grab some amazing food, hang out with them, chat, get to know them. So I'm really looking forward to that. And obviously I'm gonna be vlogging all of it for you. So you can come along this journey with me. I'm really excited, but I'm also really nervous because there's just so many things going on. I'm going to another country I've never been to before for this random company that reached, I mean, they're not totally random. They have a legit like major following and tons and tons and tons of really good reviews but i mean just you know in my head in the in the space of doubt it's like random country uh, random company getting a hair procedure like what is happening but hey yolo right um <laughs> i try to say yes to things when i can and it usually leads to really cool experiences and opens up a lot of doors that i wasn't expecting that's how i got here with you on YouTube in the first place is by saying yes to things and not being scared. So that's what I'm going to do. I will keep you posted on that as well. That's happening. I'm flying out on February 5th. So Godspeed to me. Think of me on February 5th as I'm traveling across the, the world <laughs> to change my five head into not a two head, just a four head. Just want a four head. Okay, and last but not least, you guys have been so patient with me on this. I know this is running long. This year, I have an opportunity at the International AIDS Conference, which happens every year in a different city around the world, 
This year it's going to be July 20th to July 26th in Munich, Germany. I've been asked to moderate a panel of, I believe, scientists to talk about HIV cure research. How cool is that? As some of you know, I'm the co-chair for the HOPE Collaboratory here in the U.S., which focuses on HIV cure research. It's, it's funded by the NIH here. And so I've, I've, had a, I've been doing a lot in that field, and I love it. It's so exciting. It's, there's so much groundbreaking research. Um, so I love dabbling in that and learning about the science of that and sharing that with you. And so now they're asking me to come to this conference to moderate the panel. I'm really looking forward to that. And while I'm there, I'm also going to be participating with the HOPE Collaboratory. They're also going and we're setting up in the Global Village. And the Global Village is this free, open to the public space in the convention center where there's tons of booths and little zones and there's a stage and they have all this content that's really focused on community. And so we're going to set up a booth or a zone or something. Actually, let me rephrase that. We're, we are applying to to get a booth or a zone. Whether we actually get approved is up in the air at this point. Also send us good energy for that because that would be a really great experience for us to be able to, to be there, have a zone, and then really engage with community members, educate them about HIV cure research and HIV in general. And then I would also love to host some interviews there, um, maybe have some like guests and do some panels and things like that. So, and that's obviously stuff that I would share with all of you guys. So look out for that. I know that was a lot. Thank you all so much for being patient with me these last couple of months since I haven't had a, a lot of content coming out. I'm really excited for this year. Happy New Year. I hope you all have your goals and are really just as excited as I am for all the opportunities that are just await us around the corner. We never know what's going to happen, right? All right, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. And please continue to share this with anyone who might find value in this content. Those are, as always, the best ways that you can support me and my channel. Until next time, cheers.